In today's video, we're going to take a look at the basics of a superheterodyne receiver. And there's really two key elements to any superhet design. One is frequency conversion using mixers, so we'll talk about that first. And then the second is filtering in the IF, or the intermediate frequency stage. So let's get started. Now I've talked about mixers in previous videos, and I'll link one or two of those down below. So we'll just do a quick review here. So a mixer is a device that can take two input signals, and then produce an output that's related to those two inputs. And the rules are basically this. The output will consist of a number of different frequency components, one of which is the sum of the input frequency and the local oscillator frequency, as well as the difference products, uh, the frequency in minus FLO or uh, FLO minus F in, depending on which frequency is higher. And the reality is you can also get harmonics and things like that as well, but we're just going to concern ourselves with those particular components. Now typically a superheterodyne receiver is going to take advantage of really just one of these. And in most cases, it is the LO minus FN, meaning that the local oscillator frequency is designed to be higher than the input frequency. But that's not always the case. There are plenty of radios that are just the other way around. So if we consider the case where the local oscillator frequency is higher than the input frequency, uh, what we're going to get out of that is the difference, FLO minus FN, so a signal sitting here, as well as the sum, which is way out here. Now this is very far away from uh, this component here, so that's easy to filter away. Now one of the things that's always essentially an issue that can be concerned about when designing a superhet receiver is the image response. Because uh, while a signal sitting here uh, with respect to FLO will produce a component at the output in this location, a signal equidistant on the other side of the local oscillator frequency called an image frequency will also produce an output here. It will also produce a sum output way out over here so we don't worry about that one. But this image frequency can land right on top of the signal we're really interested in. So you generally have to have ways of dealing with that and it's usually done with some front-end filtering to keep that signal from getting into the mixer in the first place. So here's a highly simplified version of a single conversion superheterodyne receiver, or actually just a portion of it. Uh, typically you'll have the antenna and then some front end which will maybe include some amplification, so maybe some attenuation, some limiting, maybe some filtering to get rid of images, etc. And also uh, oftentimes the gain control in this front end is part of the automatic gain control or automatic uh, of volume control of the particular radio. And that's typically what's in the front end. So the RF signal after being processed from the front end is presented as F in, or a whole range of frequencies input into the mixer. The mixer is also fed with a local oscillator. And when you're tuning a radio up or down, when you're tuning the VFO or, or the main tuning knob, what you're really tuning is the frequency of this local oscillator. Because that's going to change essentially what the mixing products are that are coming out. So this is what you're changing when you're adjusting uh, the tuning settings on your radio. Now as we described, the output of that mixer is going to consist of a number of different frequency components. Uh, some and difference frequencies of the local oscillator and then all of the signals present at the input. So there's going to be a whole pile of signals appearing here. It is the job of the IF or intermediate frequency filter to select just the particular frequency of interest that you actually want to go receive and that's going to reject everything else on either side of it. We'll take a look at this graphically in a moment and actually go probing around in the receiver to go take a look at that. And then finally the output of that IF filter generally goes through some amplification, maybe some additional filtering, and then off to the demodulation stages, whether it's a amplitude detector for AM or a product detector for single sideband or CW or maybe even a ratio detector for FM. But it's really the job of the IF filter to provide the selectivity of the receiver in terms of being able to select and receive the signal of interest and reject signals on either side of it. So we only are listening to one particular station at a time. So here's what's going on kind of graphically inside that receiver. Uh, this is say the signals that are being present at the input uh, of the antenna. Now I'm showing just three signals present across some frequency range with frequency going up in this direction. So these are the signals that are effectively presented to the input of the mixer. So here is the ideal spectrum of the local oscillator. It's just a frequency, a uh, single frequency here. And in this case, again, we're doing what we call high side injection, which is creating an LO that is higher than the signals of interest. So that's the local oscillator input into the mixer. 
And in this case, the product that we're interested in is the local oscillator frequency minus the F in. And because we have minus F in here, what that means is the spectrum that's coming out of the mixer is inverted from the spectrum going in. So while the frequency is going up in this direction in terms of the frequency of each of these stations, they're go it's going in the opposite direction at the output of the mixer. This is the lowest frequency station, this is the one in the middle, and this is the highest frequency station. Now, this is simply called spectral inversion, and it happens when you're using the difference product that's a result from the LO being higher than the signal of interest. Now in many cases, many different modulation types like AM and uh, CW and things like that, uh, it really doesn't matter that the spectrum is inverted. Uh, so we can detect it the same way whether it was inverted or not. So in, in this sense, it really doesn't matter. Now when you tune uh, the receiver, as we talked about, you're tuning the frequency of the local oscillator. So when that tunes back and forth, this difference product also moves back and forth the same way. And the whole idea is to, to move this converted spectrum back and forth so that the particular signal of interest that you want to receive lands inside the IF filter. It's a fixed frequency filter. So whatever signal lands inside that IF gets through and everything else on either side of it gets blocked. So the only thing that is sent down to the rest of the receiver for demodulation and for you to listen to is the particular signal of interest. Now the main reason this is done is that you know, the critical thing in any receiver oftentimes is selectivity, being able to hear the signal you want and not the signals on either side of it. It's pretty difficult to design a tunable bandpass filter that's tunable over the frequency range you want to listen to. So by converting everything into an IF, the IF can be at a fixed constant frequency so you can optimize the filter and the amplification stages and things just for that particular frequency and then by using this mixing process we can put the signal of interest into that fixed IF. So with that, let's actually go take a look at these particular spectral components in an actual receiver. Now our test subject for this video is my old realistic DX160 uh, five band communications receiver. I bought this radio in the mid 70s after saving up lawn mowing money for a whole summer. So I've got a number of probes sitting inside this receiver and we're looking at the RF input uh, coming from the antenna going through some uh, input amplification stages and then we're looking at the local oscillator, the output of the mixer, and then the output of the IF filter. Okay, so here we have uh, a couple of selected points in that receiver looking at the spectral content of it. The top trace here, the yellow one, is looking at the RF input. So this is a portion of the AM band. Uh, I'm centered at about 830 kilohertz in the center here. Um, starting from 580k up to 1.08 meg. So it's about the lower half of the AM broadcast band. And we can see a pretty strong signal here. There's another strong signal here. I've got some spurs in here just coming from noise here in the lab. So that's what's being shown uh, just in terms of the input signals coming into the receiver. This next trace here is actually looking at the spectral content of the local oscillator that's going into the mixer. Now, uh, while these two spectral plots have the same span, they have a different center frequency. So the center frequency of this one here is actually at 1.2 megahertz. Let's kind of center that up there. Okay, so that's centered at 1.2 meg. So we can see this signal here is sitting a bit higher than 1.2 meg. All right, so it's, a, it's over you know, past this uh, right side edge of the input spectrum. Now this signal down here shown in red is the output of the mixer. And uh, so it does have a bit of a hump right at the IF frequency of 455 kilohertz. And the reason for that is because the load of, the, of this uh, output of the mixer is going into a tuned circuit. It's going into an IF transformer. So it's essentially a tuned load. So it's going to provide more gain at the IF frequency. So it's essentially the beginning of the IF filtering, although it's not the IF filter itself. Now if we look carefully, we can see this input signal here, which is pretty strong. We can see the modulation side bands on it. It's an AM signal. That signal is this guy over here. Okay, you can kind of recognize that if you look at them both at the same time, they're doing the same thing. So this is that spectral inversion that I mentioned. So working my way up, you know, there's another couple of signals working my way up. There's one here 
you know, another one over here. Those are this signal here, and then actually this one over here. And there's a couple of other strong ones here as well, like this guy here is likely that guy. All right. And then the, finally, the last uh, output here is taking the signal out of the mixer and going through the actual IF filter. So we're seeing essentially just the passband response. And we can see I've got you know, just a lot of gain at the 455 kilohertz center frequency. But all these other signals that are outside of that passband are really not making it through. So that's where we're getting our selectivity. So what we're going to do is tune the radio. And what we'll see is the local oscillator frequency move and this spectral content move. So we can place any of these particular signals into that IF filter. So let's tune down. Okay, so I can I want to tune down to this frequency here because that's about the strongest one I have on the band here. So that's this guy. So we want to put that guy into the IF filter. So you notice as I'm tuning down, um, the local oscillator frequency is coming down, and the spectrum of the signal, uh, the output is moving down. All those components are moving down here along with that. So I want to get down to that strong signal right here. I'm just going to ease up on it here. And now with that centered in, now I can see that signal is making it through the IF. Really no other signals are. And that particular signal is now being converted down from this LO to the mixer output, centered on the IF output, or the IF filter. The IF is stripping away everything else but that signal. And that's the one that's going into the demodulator to actually go listen to. So I hope you enjoyed this brief look at the Super Heterodyne receiver and what are those signals actually look like inside an actual receiver. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. And if you'd like to get notified when I post a new video, be sure to click the bell that's uh, just down below this video in the YouTube player. Thanks again as always for watching. We'll see you next time.